Hi! Wanda Stevenson has a career spanning from architecture to interior design. Some of her achievements to name a few, the Jamaica Pegasus, the Courtly Hotel, the Nutswood Court, Sunset Beach, and well, whew, numerous homes. She's done a magnificent redesign job on the house behind me, so stay tuned. We'll meet Wanda when we come back. I'm Nadia, and you're watching House Proud. Hi, Wanda. Hi. How are you? Fine. Welcome. Nice to find me too. Yes, welcome to House Proud. Thank you. So we are in this luxurious home. I haven't even seen the entire thing, but um, take it away. You, 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 you've done so much to the home, I understand. Mm -hmm. So, I guess the ball's in your court now. It's been a treat. This project is really wonderful because this house was an existing property and about 25 years ago they had a well-known Jamaican architect redesign it for their tastes of the 80s. Mm -hmm. So after 24 years they thought, time for a change. And they sourced me out and uh, I got involved and we just took like teeth. Wonderful. And this foyer is wonderful because this supporting column um, and the beams, we've made them a little more decorative by adding some poplar moldings and purposely have left them natural so that the crown molding and everything has a much more earthier tone because we're in the ground floor foyer. What was the purpose of putting moldings up though? To soften the edge because it's uh, concrete and to give the color some uh, texture. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we did this lovely earth tone terracotta brick color, um, then the fine green behind me, um, the color changes. To break it up, we right. did the pilaster with the crown molding. And that's one of the details that I really enjoyed working out. And it's one of these on-site decisions, which sometimes turn out to be the best instead mm -hmm. of planning and planning and planning. Well, I see a couple of things in here, pieces already that, that I want to make mention of. One is, what, what exactly is this particular window? This is a fantastic work of art that they collected on one of their trips to India. And uh, to add definition to this space, because I love the staircase, you'll notice that the staircase is uh, quite contemporary. And we just mirrored it and, and created a window. So you have the outdoors reflecting. And um, there's beautiful details on the, uh, the, the white themselves. metal. Right. And then we added some track lights um, and position them appropriately mm -hmm. for highlighting the works of art. But this crown molding detailing is, is something that people can consider because it's a product that you can buy and um, cut it to make it look like a capital. Mm -hmm. And then even though this is a small space, you think, well, why bother to mold it? Oh, but it just yes. gives more definition to it and character. Normally people would have a lovely uh, Persian rug um, parallel to the wall, but to soften all the straight hard edge of the architecture, we've turned it at a slight angle and then softened the steel column. Um, I love this structural work of the stairs with this beautiful pot. Now, this is a work in progress, so the color of the steel um, supports the stringers, etc., will be in an appropriate finish paint of the same color as the wall. Mm -hmm. And then the floating staircase will um, pop up more. Right, right. right. Yes. yes. This is a wonderful detail that I inherited and it's a great way to give privacy, definition, light, and also expressing design by local craftsmen in Jamaica. Leaded glass in various water ripples effects and these medallions of stone and they're, they're stone on both sides, not just flat. So it's quite three dimensional. I love it. I think it's wonderful. Exactly. And the soft tones of the amber with the clear glass and yet you still maintain the privacy without being too strong. Further down this little passageway, we come to what is called their recreation center. Because this is a nighttime space, we're going to make the walls a little darker. The gorgeous faux finishing mm -hmm. is terrific, and it was done by a 
local artist in Jamaica, and she's really good. Um, but it needs a little more depth, depth of field, right? Because they bring their guests in here for pre-dinner drinks, and um, then they uh, have dinner upstairs, and then they come down afterwards to watch TV or um, entertain. And the three spaces are quite exotic. I love the lighting, cable lighting, which is a wonderful thing to use. I've used it in clients' uh, entertainment areas before because it's directional and it's a clear white light. And it moves along mm -hmm. the green. You can mm -hmm. uh, position them. These are the short leg. They have ones called daddy long legs, which for higher ceilings, and they have longer steel rods on the copper cables. This area has a color that, in the third area, that is relevant to the same color in the foyer, and that brings an interaction to the two spaces. The uh, wall unit houses the TV and the audiovisual presentation material, and the end wall unit is a clever display and concealing of exercise equipment, and he just pulls it out when he needs to do his exercises. That is so handy. I mean, I've gone to some houses, Wanda, and I tell you, the set has been sitting down there, hasn't been used, collecting dust. <laughs> I know, and they look so horrible because they are in black and gray or white and black, and it doesn't really relate to this color concept. Um, the soft tones in the lighting is also wonderful, the, um, the beaded shades, and you notice I've twisted the rattan sofa at a slight angle, again, to relieve any bowling alley effect or straightness. And the, the sweet little table here with the Thonay chairs, those chairs were designed in about 19, the first quarter of the century and earlier. Uh, but the table was just a plain wooden table. And so we added a faux finish technique to the base, the pedestal base, and then stained the top in the pinwheel effect with a darker mahogany stain. In past episodes, Wanda, we've featured a lot of numerous antiques, um, one in particular, planter's chairs, and I see that they have two in this area. They're also, I understand, very expensive. Yes, they are, and they're quite beautiful. Um, this is one type of planter's chair where it has the studded, a very thick leather back and seat in a slung manner. You can also swing your arm, your leg over this arm. And this is a very simple uh, cutout shape without any carving. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they have little rosettes and carving details on them, but the, the feet have a, um, almost like a King Edward um, leg to the chair. Right. This other planter's chair is really unique, and this is a special one. These are very rare to find, very difficult. Yes. And it's from their private collection. Wanda, I must say that the warmth, the color, the terracotta color, and amongst all their wonderful collectibles, mm -hmm. it's really warm and inviting down here. It is. I, uh, I appreciate how it brings up these uh, light fixtures and it high highlights them beautifully mm -hmm. um, that the previous... Uh, there's another young lady that did this work. Mm -hmm. So it's really a work in progress still mm -hmm. and many mm -hmm. hands have been in the pot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we got to take a break. When we come back, we go upstairs and see what Wanda has in store for us. See you soon. Wanda, you've extended the green color throughout the entire floor and the casing for the stairwell. Uh -huh. I just love this green. What, what color is it? Uh, it's a gorgeous color. The name escapes me because what we've done in this whole project is every color we selected, we picked more than uh, two colors and did test samples because you should really look at color in the morning, afternoon and evening because mm. the characteristics change. Um, this wall of art is from his relatives, Trinidadian artist, uh, who recently passed away. Yeah. He's a well-known Trinidadian. Excellent, very cultural. Guy. Very cultural. It's beautiful. The colors are fantastic. These chairs, right. whoa, they were originally mahogany. Mahogany, yes. Now, if, um, if our viewers heard me say I painted mahogany chairs, they would they were say, wicked woman. Exactly. But um, <laughs> mahogany is, besides a beautiful wood, a very gorgeous wood to carve. 
So we painted them in this lime green and then did a copper metallic uh, glaze over it. And the, the client um, went and purchased from abroad some soap plant because I, I gave her some inspiration it's to so work with. Bright and it's off, lovely. It's more color into the room. Mm -hmm. It's a nice counterpoint to the wall color. And then this little carved piece was also a, a natural dark stained uh, table. And in a pinch, I just took the Carduco, the metallic paint, and... That's automotive paint, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Which is very hard, naturally, because it's for mm -hmm. cars, and it's very durable. And the beautiful mirror was purchased locally, and then I have some copper metallic paint, and the faux finishing artist uh, toned it down because it was a little too gold. And it would have been too yellow against the green wall because this is a green family of colors. Isn't it gorgeous? The beading is a very yeah. classical touch, and then it's got this deco effect with the rippling frame and then like the balls, it. you know? I just love it. This is a wall unit that I designed for the clients. Um, they had a, in the design 24 years ago, a very 1980s effect of a display unit, uh, which was very contemporary. Mm -hmm. And now she's gone into a traditional Caribbean look. Tell me a bit, Wanda, about the, the molding on the two entrances. Oh, that was interesting because I inherited French doors and I said, do you really need them? Because it was making too much of a statement in the room. And well, we lock up at night. And I said, well, you know, you have a very good system here. So maybe you should consider just taking the doors off. And mm -hmm. they agreed. And I double molded with the, the timber molding and it's poplar. We painted it white, and then the spoke finishing artist from Montego Bay, she's fantastic. She came and spent some time here, and I gave her a tiny little a chip of a marble, a mm -hmm. green marble, and she's replicated it absolutely, absolutely. perfectly. Yeah. And then that carving of the shell um, is something that you can buy, and so we did this effect of a pediment over the doorway. So these are grand entrances and exits to the dining room. Mm -hmm. I also love the cushions on the Aren't set. they gorgeous? Yeah. Call this area the wonder. We've, we've met our entertainment center. This, well, this is their the formal, formal, formal lounge. lounge. Mm -hmm. they, they sit here and listen to the music and after dinner or they also come out to the veranda and enjoy themselves. The lattice work is re reminiscent of the demerara shutters where they're hinged at the top and they uh, push out. This also offers um, them an element of privacy from their neighbors so they can be out here lounging, entertaining and relaxing and have a very private space. This is their lovely dining room. This is fabulous. The walls were done by an, another faux finishing artist in Kingston and the ceiling uh, was a tray but we improved on it because we took out the tongue and groove board mm -hmm and then put in plaster and it will get a lovely Provence kind of mustard shade and highlight it in white with the moldings. Okay. So it'll have a rich, warm, um, entertaining feel to it. The break front with the china, we added lighting. We repainted it black, but we did a rich red background to liven it up because it was too, too dark. And the etage behind me, which has her collection of china, is um, a former mahogany whatnot. And remember oh, the carved piece yes. outside? It's that same metallic uh, carved paint. paint. And it just gives it a lively spirit um, and doesn't take away from the work that is displayed there. You had mentioned to me about the flooring, that mm. you had redone the floors. Yes, it was a parquet floor uh, in Guango, in the typical squares that Guango was coming in 30 years ago, 20 mm. years ago. And 
we removed it and put the jatoba, which is a rich, warm red brown, on a diagonal to make the room wider mm -hmm. and then added the inlay of bamboo. And so this is white bamboo and then a border, almost like a carpet of plain planks of the same jatoba mm -hmm. to create a design for the room. In the kitchen, here we are, one of my favorite places to be. Mm -hmm. um, in a quick thing, you, you are planning also to do a little bit of refurbishing in here. Mm -hmm. What what exactly? Well, we inherited the, the tiling. I say we, meaning the row we, me. Mm -hmm. um, I liked what the architect had done with these skylights, so yeah, I've retained them, too. right? The ceiling was formerly chocolate brown, Ooh. so right. And it made it very cozy, but we wanted to have a dark? fresher. Was it dark? Yes, dark. it was dark, but plenty of lights, but it still was uh, dark. The, um, this cobalt blue color is what I added. The cabinetry was pine, regular yellow pine. And so we had the doors taken off, sanded and pickled in this blue. Cut out three doors and put in the mesh mm. so that you can see within and uh, added pulls to the doors because they really were opening with rebates on the doors and I just thought the pulls would add a nice touch. Mm -hmm. Wanda, we're still yet to see the sleeping areas of the house, um, so you know what? I think we better get to that right now. Follow us. We're en route now to the bedroom areas or sleeping areas, right? There's one particular thing you told me about this corridor. Mm -hmm. the, um, passage. the passage. It's, it's like a gallery because they have a wonderful collection of Caribbean art and um, we started fresh. We took everything off the walls. We maintained the living room color into the passage and then we rehung everything in its new home. But We're in the uh, study home office uh, with a bathroom en suite and it has a nice animal print theme to it that um, the owner has done. Wanda, we're at the end of the passageway and to the right is uh, an existing bedroom. Beautiful blue. Mm -hmm. The faux finishing uh, on this wall, these walls for the guest bedroom are gorgeous. The soft voile or lawn type curtains are fabulous. Um, this was done by the owner and I think she's so creative. The bathroom en suite is in a butterscotch tone and to make the round window pop out and the lozenge shaped mirror uh, be more dramatic, I'm suggesting that they paint the walls a butterscotch color to match the tiles and the soft blue. If we'd done blue, then it would be too much too blue, much for, blue. This, yeah, right. for the suite. So Wait, you um, could also do a lighter do shade. If you did a lighter shade of blue, then would that work? Yes, except uh, it'll then be um, broken up. Mm -hmm. And I think to have it in more of a monochromatic feel, the one color syndrome, mm -hmm. uh, it'll be nicer, more drama. Wanda, the neat thing about the pool and its location is if that particular room were for a guest, you know, it would be so convenient to have it right very oh, close. Plunge in. Yes, yeah. that would be fabulous. Yeah. The future plan is to create a nice undulating wall with a fountain coming off the wall into the pool. So that'll be quite exciting. As for the pool, uh, you don't often, you, I don't see very often pools with a dark blue. Yeah, it's a rich color. Yeah. Yes. 
Mm. It's very sensuous, very uh, inviting. Behind us now is the interesting piece, mm -hmm. a little cottage for, mm -hmm. and it's used for the guests. I understand it's also under renovations right now. Right, it's, uh, and it has the gazebo look about it, so it's very much into the garden, and it's a lovely room. I like that idea though. Yes. So if you do have a guest, maybe it's an in-law coming over, mm -hmm. whoever, mm -hmm. and they're actually out of your house, not that we mm -hmm. want them out of the house, but mm -hmm. They're very, it's very private, mm -hmm. you know. I think the architect and the client did a wonderful yeah, concept there. Too. Yes. Wanda, you've used colors so well in this particular home. What's your guide? And how do you even start identifying what colors to put where? Oh, <laughs> that's sort of an easy question. Um, you really get to know your clients when you have these discussions with them, whether they're a couple or a corporation or a hotel. Um, and you take a note of what colors they like and don't like and the fact that they have a propensity to certain colors. And you also look around their environment. If they don't have a color preference, then I just use my intuition. Well, you've done a fabulous job and I Thank had you. a wonderful time today. <laughs> Wanda, yes. Gotcha. It's been my pleasure having you on my program. Oh, and it's been a delight. I hope we see you again one of these good days. That'll be nice. That, I'd enjoy that. Good it's job. been fun. Well, I hope you've had as much fun as Wanda and myself. Thanks for viewing. And until next time, may God bless your home. Ciao for now. <laughs>